Dr. Walk. The Alzheimer's uh, Association's International Conference was held last week, and it would be great if we start off with a little bit about some of the breakthrough and promising research results uh, that were presented, including uh, the very exciting phase two results of the Biogen study of PAN2401. If you could talk a yep. little bit about it, it would be great. Yeah. Sure, sure. Thanks for, for asking, Priya. So, yeah, I was at the meeting in uh, Chicago a little over a week ago, and there were, um, as as usual, uh, a number of really kind of exciting uh, things to come out of the meeting um, as, I think, uh, reflect, reflecting the sort of incredible growth um, in the field right now and the excitement around uh, research um, in this area. Uh, before I get to the Biogen ASI study, I think there were a couple other interesting studies. One of them actually um, was presented by uh, one of our colleagues here at Penn, Ilya Nasrallah, who presented um, really important uh, data showing that more aggressive blood pressure management um, in middle age and older adults seems to reduce the amount of um, brain vascular disease changes that's very common with aging and also reduces transition to more significant cognitive impairment, suggesting that that one risk factor, maybe not necessarily related to Alzheimer's disease, but related to vascular disease, may um, be an important kind of public health um, initiative for um, reducing cognitive impairment with aging. Um, there are a number of other uh, really exciting studies with a variety of imaging markers that were now able to better visualize more of the, the pathology of Alzheimer's disease in, in living subjects, which is you know, quite exciting given that in the past, really, um, we only knew about some of this pathology through autopsy um, tissue specimens in, in individuals once they've passed away. Um, but yeah, I, I think definitely the, the big news from um, the uh, conference was this um, the results of this phase two study that was uh, from a drug that was developed by ASI and uh, then was, uh, I think, bought out by Biogen called uh, BAN2401. And what that um, drug is, is it's an antibody um, that's given to people through uh, infusion that um, binds to beta amyloid, which is the protein that builds up in the amyloid plaques of Alzheimer's disease and is thought to be a driver of the disease. And what the um, data showed was that, one, uh, in a dose-dependent fashion, there was very clear evidence that amyloid was indeed being removed from the brains in these individuals. So people who had a scan that allows us to look at amyloid in the brain before drug treatment and then after, um, with the highest dose of the drug, about 80% uh, of them ended up no longer showing evidence of amyloid in the brain, at least based on that scan. And that high-dose group also showed some evidence of cognitive slowing um, with regard to progression of Alzheimer's um, disease. And so um, that was a, a compelling result. There were a couple things uh, since it's a phase two uh, trial that always give you a pause. One is while it was a very big phase two trial, it's, it's still uh, somewhat limited in size. Um, there were some issues with the balancing of um, genetic risk in Alzheimer's disease between groups, which could impact the results some. But the bottom line is that this was yet another trial with a, a drug that is targeting amyloid in the brain in symptomatic patients that's at least pointing towards the idea that um, these kinds of interventions may slow down the course of the disease. And actually, I think, gives me a lot more uh, hope for another trial that Biogen's doing that we participated in here with a, a different antibody that also targets amyloid called aducanumab, which is in phase three uh, trials. There's two phase three simultaneous trials going on that also showed very good clearance of um, amyloid from the brain and had preliminary data showing some benefit. So between this prior um, trial with aducanumab and now this newer trial, it seems like there's signal there that we actually are affecting the course of the disease, which obviously is, is very exciting to all of us. Uh, Dr. Walk, uh, was there some discussion on some of the side effects that was observed uh, uh, in the study? Was there significant? Yeah, so some. So the, the, the data was pretty limited as this was um, uh, kind of a very last-minute presentation because uh, they had just uh, been unblinded to the results of the study, and so there's there's much more to, to learn about this data set. But the most um, common side effect, or the one that at least we think about the most in these antibody 
trials, because we've actually done now several of them, is something called amyloid-related imaging abnormalities, which is um, some swelling uh, in the brain and um, even uh, what are called microhemorrhages or little tiny bleeds um, in the brain uh, as well, which sound uh, obviously uh, quite scary, um, although in most of the studies that have been done, these patients have been largely asymptomatic or get better when you stop the drug. The nice thing about this new drug relative to aducanumab, which we're studying, is that the rates of these kinds of side effects were quite a bit lower than what we see with aducanumab, more on the order of about 10% of patients versus um, more than a third of patients in our aducanumab um, study. So that actually was you know, also another very encouraging uh, result from this study. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, we kind of uh, been reading up, and we know that Penn FTD Center and Penn Memory Center is doing excellent work in um, neurodegenerative diseases, uh, disease areas, uh, with prevention studies, genetic profiling, uh, counseling registries. Dr. Grossman, um, it would be great if you could talk about research and trials uh, on FTD that's going on at Penn right now. Sure, I'd be happy to talk about some of the FTD trials. FTD, or frontal temporal dementia, is much less common than Alzheimer's disease. Uh, Nevertheless, it's really important to learn about uh, the the results of trials in FTD because they can be directly relevant uh, to uh, Alzheimer's disease as well. Uh, uh, Dr. Wolk, my colleague, mentioned amyloid, beta amyloid. It's one of the proteins that accumulates in the brains of individuals with Alzheimer's disease and can cause plaques. Another protein that can accumulate in the brain is called tau, and uh, this protein can become misfolded and it can clog up brain cells in folks with Alzheimer's disease, and that causes uh, what are called tangles that you can see with a microscope when you look at the brains of patients with Alzheimer's disease. We study uh, patients who have FTD or frontotemporal um, degeneration, when there is just an amyl, just a tau protein alone that is accumulating in the brain, when this when the, this tau protein alone is accumulating in the brain, it causes a different kind of condition, uh, uh, and this is called FTD, and. Uh, We are studying uh, several disease-modifying treatment trials to see if we can block the accumulation of the tau protein just the way um, Dr. Wilk's trials are blocking the accumulation of the amyloid protein in folks with Alzheimer's disease. Um, Like the the strategy of using uh, antibodies to try to uh, capture amyloid in the trials for tau that we have for patients with FTD, one um, set of trials is using antibodies to try to capture the tau protein and uh, try to reduce the uh, negative side effects of this tau protein accumulating in the brain. So that's one kind of trial that we do with FTD, and this is focusing mostly on patients who have what's called sporadic disease. This is disease that occurs for reasons that we are not really um, clear, and we're trying to understand that as part of our research program. Uh, FTD uh, has a large number of people where disease is inherited, and uh, this uh, disease is familial or inherited in FTD in about 15 to 20 percent of cases in our clinic. And so we are participating in some treatment trials that are targeting uh, inherited forms of FTD as well. And these uh, trials, again, are trying to manipulate the proteins that can accumulate in the blood and uh, or can be too low in the blood or so that there is a change in brain functioning. And by uh, uh, virtue of trying to uh, uh, use antibodies to block uh, uh, the breakdown of these proteins or to allow the protein the, the small amounts of proteins to increase in their level to, uh, so that there are healthy levels of these proteins, we can then try to treat individuals who have inherited forms of FTD. This is potentially very exciting because uh, uh, we are trying to target individuals who do not yet have any symptoms. 
and if we can find a treatment that's effective for individuals who have an inherited form of FTD, and if we can um, prevent them from ever developing the disease, then we have the equivalent of a cure for um, uh, for a dementia. So this is um, a really exciting advance, I think, in the, the treatment of, um, of, of uh, neurodegenerative conditions. Oh, that, that's very exciting, Dr. Grossman. Uh, Dr. Walk, I know you mentioned uh, low, uh, studies on uh, lowering blood pressure, which reduces risk of cognitive impairment, and uh, use of biomarkers, um, tread, uh, study and use of antibodies. Uh, uh, that is, uh, the studies that are going on uh, on Alzheimer's at Penn. Um, which are some of these studies, um, other than these, that the patients or caregivers uh, should be keeping track of? Yeah, sure. Um, so I think um, one of the studies that I think is going to be a real inflection point in the field um, for a number of reasons um, that I mentioned earlier is actually that aducanumab study with uh, an antibody. It's a hard name to say, by the way, but uh, it's an antibody to um, a beta and has shown uh, or amyloid uh, beta protein and has shown uh, clearance in, in the brain of amyloid. And the reason why I think that's such an important study is, one, um, there's a lot of promise uh, associated with it based on um, some of the earlier phase data as well as this new study. But another is that um, it, it would be a um, proof of the concept that amyloid drives um, the disease and that at least in symptomatic patients, if you um, stop amyloid production or remove amyloid, I should say, from the brain, that that can slow down the course of the disease and um, and that uh, treatment at that point in, of, of the disease is something that can be effective. And so I think it's going to be an important trial because there's a number of different drugs that have targeted amyloid in symptomatic patients in the past that haven't been successful. And one you know possibility is that, you know, stopping amyloid or reducing amyloid once you already have symptoms of the disease may not um, actually effectively change the course of, of the disease. And I think because aducanumab is so effective in reducing amyloid um, in the brain relative to some of the other drugs that have been tried, it will be really a, 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 a significant test of that um, idea. And the reason why I keep saying symptomatic is because another set of trials that we're doing here at Penn that are, are quite exciting and, and somewhat akin to what Dr. Grossman had mentioned earlier is actually treating people in a pre-symptomatic or what we call a preclinical phase of Alzheimer's um, disease. And so it's thought um, that the pathological changes, the things, the proteins that are accumulating in the brain begin to do so maybe up to 15 years, if not longer, before people have any symptoms of the disease whatsoever. And so one thought is that um, maybe one of the reasons some of the other trials in the past haven't been successful is because they're treating people too late, that the sort of cascade or uh, fire um, has already been started and you can't put it out at that point. And so this these set of trials are actually giving uh, people um, – drugs that, uh, in, in the case of the three trials we're doing here, reduce amyloid in the brain, either through a, a different uh, antibody, one that um, uh, uh, in one of the studies that was developed by Lilly called solanuzumab, um, or uh, pills that break down or uh, inhibit enzymes that break down uh, amyloid uh, processing, which then um, stop or halt the sort of um, a deposition of amyloid in the brain. And there are three of these trials. One of them uh, involves giving people who are normal an amyloid PET scan, which is, allows us to detect amyloid in the brain. And uh, if they have a positive amyloid scan and they're normal, though, have no symptoms of the disease that we can detect, we're then giving them this antibody and following them to see whether it um, slows down or prevents them from ever developing symptoms uh, in the future, or at least within the five years of the study. There are two other studies very similar to that that we're doing that involve um, uh, looking for people who have high genetic risk of the disease related to a gene called the apolipoprotein E 
um, gene. And um, in that study, those who are at higher risk, kind of akin to what Dr. Uh, Grossman mentioned earlier, are entering a trial and will also be given one of these drugs or these types of drugs to see if it can kind of prevent them from going on to developing um, symptoms. Um, thank you, Dr. Walk.